Well, the other day I had a telephone call from a new student, a um, young lady who uh, contacted me via the SAA, and she said, can I tell her anything about oil pastels? Well, oil pastels are not a thing I do a lot with because I find them rather limited, but I thought it would be rather fun to give her a free session just to get her introduced to it, to it and see what she wanted to do and what progress she was to make before moving on to having further lessons before I go back to France. So she's coming this afternoon and uh, I've already prepared a small lesson for her here. And what I've done is I have watercolours out, I have oil pastels out, I have all new cheaper um, chalk pastels and my unison pastels as well to show her the difference. But I'm just going to run through what can be done, the basic techniques in the first free hour with her, um, to show her what can be done with the oil pastels that she has. And then she'll do a small snow scene with me using mixed medium. We'll use the uh, China Graph pencils, we'll use the oil pastels as a resist for watercolour, and then we'll try and even use some soft pastels on the top of that at the end, so we'll get the best and the beauty of all. So what I've prepared here already then is, we've got the watercolours ready, we've got the pastels ready, uh, I've got this uh, chart here to work on with her. Right, so what have we got here? We've got acrylic paint on there, we've got acrylic ink on here, we've got watercolours here. I'm now going to just cover this over with some black oil pastels which we'll use for scraffito. I want to show how scraffito can be used on these as well. And then in this area here we'll learn about blending with the fingers by cross-hatching with overlapping, pointillist, uh, terps and spirit and scumbling. So those are really all of the main basic techniques we can use and you'll get some ideas then of how we can take it further. So January has arrived as in the 1st of January, not the month, we haven't even got to uh, April yet, and she's got a wonderful set of scenarios here which are at the tops, and they'll be much different to the much cheaper ones, which is exactly the same as when we're using ordinary pastels. The difference, and I'll show you those again in a minute, is so totally different, the creaminess and what you could do with them is so totally different. So these are much, much, uh, much, 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 much heavier body. And of course were brought about by the artist Picasso who wanted a much softer body to be created um, for the use of it with the oil paints and oil pastels. Um, right, so let's have a look at uh, what we can do close up. So there's January's set, beautiful set of oil pastels. And the first thing we'll do is just look at the cheaper ones as compared to those in the marks we can actually make an evening blending. So on blending, we're going to look at using our fingers to blend cross-hatching, overlapping, the pantalist technique, just using a little bit of terps to blend, which can be very useful if you're doing mixed media work as well, and a bit of scumbling, as in the texture of the paper. Do you know what scumbling means? No. Right, so dry brush is literally with a dry brush and a stiffer brush, we tend to put a thin layer of paint over the surface of another layer of paint on the surface of the paper. Scumbling is a little bit similar in that we use a little bit of paint on the brush to bring over the surface of the paper or over another paint. In this case, we'd be bringing it one colour over another. Although, if I were to scumble on here, even with one of your pastels straight away, very, very likely, that's scumbling. We can just see the surface now coming. And okay. look how lovely and soft those are. As if straight away I take one of the cheaper ones, and I try to do that very thing, the scumbling, and it only just comes out. It only just right. starts to show. Right. So these are harder and not as creamy as the more expensive ones will be. So you can do the right thing there and getting a good set. Um, what I wanted to show was a technique that I saw being used at Burton Nappers Hall years ago um, where somebody was priming board and painting um, quite smooth MDF with strong colours and then actually applying the oil pastel over the top and scratching through which can be very very effective. It's another, another way, we sort of look at different mediums as well, different ways of working. Let's start with the blending and the usual way of blending is with a finger. So if you've got those pictures handy you wanted to, you wanted to, to recreate got an idea of what you want to do already, that's good. So we're looking at doing effects like these. You can already see on here the way that we can put one colour over and next to another. So we've got these colours blending into each other and we've also got a dark colour showing through there. So I'm, I'm suspecting there may be a darker coloured paper underneath there from the start. In which case we might be using something like an Ongros pad, which in this case here we have a pastel paper, before we go on to doing the actual demos. Let's just discuss the whole thing. So this is ordinary white watercolour paper. This is a knot paper, so it's not rough and it's not smooth. It's in between. So the texture of the paper is going to be quite... A, it's going to give you a, a very different effect again. The Ongros papers, you can get like this. And don't be fooled by the way that they come, because you see this is... You see there's a sort of linen texture on top. Mm -hmm. Not the side you want to use. The side you want to use is the smoother side. Right. You know the texture on there, because... Um, the bite isn't in the surface texture of the paper, it's on the actual 
surface of the paper itself, not the texture. So okay. um, we can do really good uh, pastels and water and so on on a smooth watercolour paper just as well as we can on a textured. The texture can get in the way. If you want an orange peel texture, it's great. If you don't, then it okay. gets in the way. Um, so if you were doing snow, wouldn't be great because mm -hmm. you could get the snowy effect by putting the dark on first and the light afterwards. Mm -hmm. Now this means that you could tint the paper first with something that will still allow us to paint on top, which is what I was just doing here with some of these. And I put on acrylic inks here um, very, very finely, but it would allow the pastel to go top. Now these are the cheaper pastels. Let's just see what happens when you put one of your softer pastels over this. So this is acrylic ink. I've put the bright pink and some cerulean blue there. This is ordinary acrylic paint. This is watercolour. So it's interesting to see how the pastels will go over the top, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we've got some cheaper white put over there. Can we find a white in yours? Have we got a... That's it. But when you've already been using a bit. And let's just see. You see, this is the cheapy here. But look how beautiful that is. That's wonderful, isn't it? Mm. But I love them. I, mean, I, I could work with this number. I couldn't work with these, these bits of stuff because they just wouldn't work. So you, you know, you, you certainly done the right thing in buying in buying some quality materials. But that means that I can then scrape through that. Mm -hmm. So we could do scraffito work. It's called scraffito. Right. Um, which I'm going to show on here in a moment. Here we do scraffito down here. Let's just take, for instance, across here. Um, these take. These hard ones take a lot of rubbing, so they're quite difficult to scrape off. But if we now take, uh, say I wanted to do a multicoloured parrot uh, with a dark background, I could have areas of colour like this, and then put a dark background over the top and scrape through with all my parrot feathers and so on showing through, which is why I looked at that and thought, well, right. yes, we could link these. So I, what I want to do is not say, this is the only way. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do with me is keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. Not, I know you want to do these passes, I know what you want to do, and I'm going to help you do that. But keep yourself open to other ideas as well, because mm -hmm. there's so many exciting things to do in art. There's so much fun to have. So we want to be looking at the mixed medium stuff. We want to be looking at um, not just one way of working with these passes, but exploring and taking everything further as well. You've got some beautiful colours. So maybe this idea of graffito could be of use to you with something like this. So we've got a coloured paper there. So could you do that with a coloured paper, or, or would it have to be sealed with some sort of paint? And no, you, if you've got the, you've got the coloured papers already, so okay. that should work. Mm -hmm. But I think the coloured papers like this will be difficult because they're absorbent. They will, we will try that in a minute, but you'll find that they'll actually take the colour in, and they'll be difficult to scrape through. If we do it on a board with paint, mm -hmm. which is a harder surface, which isn't so absorbent to surface, mm -hmm. um, or if we do it on paper like this, then you can see we can scrape through and it will work all right. So, and another thing as well is the coloured papers, however expensive they are, don't tend to be fixed. They don't tend to be permanent. They tend to gradually fade. Right. Even the pastels, even the best quality. We've, we've tested, when I was at Camberwell, we tested them in the sunlight in a window and left them for only three or four weeks. And even then, with a piece of paper over the top, when we took the paper off, they had faded. Mm -hmm. Even the top quality material, mm -hmm. so sunlight isn't good, but it just gives you an idea. So what I tend to do when I want a coloured background is I tend to use acrylic inks, which are more permanent, or a good quality thin paint, mm -hmm. to make a coloured background like that, which will remain permanent if we need it showing through. So yes, you're all right having um, the background paper like this, but... Uh, it will gradually fade in the background, so it will change the effects you've got. Whereas if you were to paint a background, it won't. Right. Yeah? Um, now, remember the pastel paper can actually be stretched like watercolour paper as well if you ever need to use that. And have a tight surface if you're using water or anything with it, but you won't be using water much. So we've had a little look at that. Now let's just go, let's literally just start scraping onto the stick. Some of your bright pink, uh, there's lovely bright pink over here, your, your lipstick. And look how thick that is on there, it's beautiful. Then we'll take a light over a dark. In our armoury and painting, we've got warm and cool, we've got light and dark, we've got rough and smooth. And then we've got the opposites in the colour circle, red, green, purple, yellow, all of those things. And then uh, we've also got the, so the, the, um, the, the uh, colour hues as well. So every single colour, looking at your beautiful colours here, this is a cool green, this is a warm green, because it's more browner, it's more yellowy brown than this one, that's a very warm green. When we come to the purples, it's more difficult because is a purple a warm or a cool? So that would be a warm, cool. That's a cool, that's a warm. But it would also be a cool, warm because it is bluer than this one. Mm. So every single colour we've got has a warm and a cool. 
And I tell you this because as we get more advanced, and I don't expect you to take everything on in one go. We gradually do this bit by bit. I'm just giving you, I'm feeding the birds, you'd have to get the birds interested, you know. Mm -hmm. It'll all come together gradually. I'm just giving you this because we know why and what we're doing. If we wanted something warmer in a painting, we don't keep putting things warmer. We put something cooler next to it. Right. So if we want smooth, we put rougher next to it. If we want dark, we put lighter next to it. If we want, we put the opposites together. Mm -hmm. So, here we've got a warm on a dark, a light on a dark, and a warm on a cool. Let's take a dark onto here now and see how that shines through. If only for a lovely deep blues, and these are beautiful colours, but look how thickly we can lay them on. It is important with oil pastels that we lay them very thickly. We can scumble, yes. Let's put a scumble colour over there. If I just take this and do it lightly, this would be called scumbling. So it's very, very light over the top, and the dark colour comes through underneath. And because of the texturing, it's broken colour. Now, broken colour is what the Impressionist used, Monet. He would not paint orange, he would put red and yellow dots. The pointillist technique, which we're going to look at over here, he would put them together to make an effect of orange when the eye is fooled. Mm -hmm. The smaller the dots, the more it's mm -hmm. fooled. So this would be a pointillist technique because the texture is allowing the blue to come through. So it's giving us an almost purpley brown mm -hmm. from a distance, whereas that is much thicker. Right, having done that, Let's just put a, a lovely dark onto here as well. We'll take uh, one of your deep blues again just for the fun of it. Let's just see how this works. Now this is quite absorbent paper, so I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Now that's almost scumbling it across. Feathering is very light strokes like this. And that's scumbling. So feathering is little feathery, feathery marks like the end of a feather. This is scumbling going over the top. And this would be impasto. This would be paste impasto, laying it on heavily. Now if we wanted to get some wonderful effects here, how can we? Let's have a look and see. If I take my knife and just for the fun of it try to sneak through there, I'm hoping this is going to work. <laughs> let's, let's zoom the camera in, because until you've not done this before, it's all exploratory. Let's see what we can do. Let's go off and take the camera with me. If I now try and scrape through this one. Oh yes, look at that. Isn't that fun? So if we were going to do your birds or something, we could actually have whole colours going, not just we could have one colour against another, we could actually work out our bird colours, so say we had a bird with bands of colour of parrots or whatever underneath, you could use the acrylic inks underneath, which wouldn't affect your breathing problems, and then we could put lovely deep rich darker colours on top, or light on the darks of the parrot underneath, either way, and then we could scrape through for the feathers, leaving the darks behind, isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. So there already we've got a way of going about this further than what we would have done, so that's just basic this is more advanced. We've, mm -hmm. we've now already gone from... We'll have to look at the pastel paper in a moment. And from here, again, we're going now from the light to the dark again. That was dark to light. If we take that white away, we go from the light to the dark. Down here, um, this is the cheek pastel. You can see how we can get quite nice effects. And again, depending on what you cut through with, if I used a comb, I could get different effects, a metal dog comb or something, to what I can with the, the, with the knife here. A very dark one here, look, and we can get all these lovely effects scratching through. So straight away, we've got ways that we can get smashing effects by Scraffito. And that could be done even on MDF with a priming of Indian ink. So a priming of white emulsion, first of all. Indian ink could go onto the white emulsion, which would give you that luminosity. But it would be a board rather than the paint, mm -hmm. sort of paper. Or we could use um, the inks on paper and so on. We've got all these different surfaces. You're not just stuck now with paper. So straight away you've come here thinking paper only. No, mm -hmm. we've now moved from watercolour paper. We'll have a look at pastel paper in a moment. Then we're going to go back to how we can blend these. This is the pastel paper. Let's just see for fun. I'm going to work on the back of this pastel paper just to give us an idea. This is how it comes in the sheets of tracing in between. Right. So a different sort of paper altogether. If you feel that, and then you feel this. Should I block that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's more blotting papery, isn't it? It's more, yes. there's more texture to it, there's more surface. So this is bound to soak this in more. I wouldn't be able to paint onto this so easily. I couldn't put acrylic inks on this. They would just die and they'd soak right in and they'd be lost. Okay. Acrylic paint is possible, but you'd be much better off using a good watercolour paper or even a card. Now, a mount card would be lovely because mount card 
Um, have I got any lying around? I think I have. Um, mount card is slightly heavier and it's slightly shinier on the surface. And that, actually I haven't thought about that one, but mount card could be a lovely one to work the acrylic inks on and then the oil pastels onto. So that's worth thinking about. Okay. And most, I haven't had I mean, tons in France, so spare, I could bring some back for you next year, but the offcuts I have I just don't use, I only do bigger pictures. Um, but most mount cutters would be able to let you have some cheaper pieces of offcuts of mount card. So, right. so that's what it is. It, it's mount card. It's acid mount free card. mount card. Yeah. Right. Okay. The acid free mount card. And if it's they get they come in various textures as well. If it's too smooth, it's going to be difficult. It wouldn't take the pastel. It might not even take the ink. So you want an ordinary mount card, a matte mount card, um, with a pearl effect possibly. That could be very interesting and useful to try, couldn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's nice to work on as well. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at this then and see what happens. Let's just see what happens when we want to scrape through one thing to another. So we'll take our light first, just for fun. I can see on there, yes. There's some lovely light. Now I'm going to put it quite thick, yeah. And I'm going to take some very dark. And with two things going to happen, we could start blending. I don't want to see if we can actually just layer one over the other and what happens. So there we have impasto, light and dark. Let's put some of the yellow over that and try not to blend it. So if we can go thickly over it, we can just, but it's trying to blend immediately. So I've got to, I've got to be pretty clean to get that to go over there, haven't I? But mm -hmm. I know I can get this to go, but again, I don't want it to blend. And that's what will happen, because that's what, so if it's nice and pure. Can I now scrape through, or am I going to have to be using techniques like the, like the acrylic inks? Let's find out, shall we? Find very delicate, look, yes, we can just, but it's slightly messier. But now we can see how you can get the effects of those feathers on your birds. We don't just have to do it with the pastel tip. We can also scrape through and we can also blend out from there as well with the different effects. So straight away, even on pastel paper, so that's pastel paper as compared to the watercolour paper. Right, coming back then, so much to take in, so much fun to have. Let's come back now straight away to uh, our little demonstration sheet and we'll look at these are the standard ways that you'll find on YouTube that people have got to. I haven't. I had a quick look to see what else there was, and people haven't gone very far with it, possibly because the other mediums are more versatile. Mm -hmm. But all I've seen them doing is these. I haven't seen them doing Sufito. I haven't seen them doing any of this on there. Okay. And it was, a, it was an artist that was doing this in Burton Edwards, and she was doing these lovely coloured landscapes. She was painting all the backgrounds in of the landscapes, and the base, base colours of the trees and flowers and things and then putting pastels over the top and scratching through to get the effects of the textures and the leaves and all that sort of thing. So right, with, with oil pastels? Yeah, yeah. yeah. on top of the, okay. on top of the, the paints. Mm -hmm. Okay, blending. So the, 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 the most simple one is, is the blending. So again, I'm not going to use my cheapies at all because they are rubbish. I've only, I've only, I had fun with these. Oh, yeah, one other trick you can do with pastels is you can actually take one of these little lighters for the ovens, you know, like even a cigarette lighter, but the longer ones are better, you don't burn your fingers with a gas and you can melt the pastels. So you can actually melt pastels and trickle them around things. So when I was doing mixed media abstract work, I found that I could, with oil paints, I could actually melt and trickle these and things around the oil paints, which I couldn't do with the oil paints. So again, it's exp exp exploration. Mm -hmm. I'm, all I want to do is hopefully infuse and excite, and then you can go away and think, well, these ideas, yeah, mm -hmm. try them, Pete, and then come back to me and show me, and you know, we're away. So blending, you sound very enthusiastic at what I do. I just love it. I just, I, painting is eating and drinking to me. I can't live without food, my, my painting. Right, blending. So we'll take what two colours should we have? Let's do what the ones we were just doing because they're rather fun. So we'll take some yellow and we'll put it down and we'll rub it in, smooth it in. This is a bit mucky because my finger's got a bit of green in it. But if we do it too lightly, it's going to scumble and leave the surface showing through, which is all right when we're wanting that colour to show through like this. But if you want it solid, we've got to push it much harder. Mm -hmm. Got to break your pastels up. Um, take a nice light yellow there as well. Take a light, slightly lighter one down here. Let's look at that. Look, that's cleaner because I've messed it up. Now, if we want to take and make an orange there, we've got oranges, but we can blend. And now, the first way of blending is with the fingers. So if I put some orange there, nice and thickly, then again, if the pastels are quality, we can smooth them out with that, keep them clean. You can take the pastel that's on your finger, usually the darker into the lighter. Right. Because it's harder to get the light into the darker, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you can bring that one into the other look and actually blend them together so easily. Now that was just straightforward blending. I can bring one over the other and blend. 
but it starts to blending one into the other. Now, if that were in watercolour, we would say that would be wet next to wet, because mm -hmm. one colour goes into another. And this would be wet into wet, because it's going into the colour. Okay? So the wet next to the wet, wet in, blending with the fingers. We've got the overlapping, which is what I was just doing there. So if I take... That was bringing one colour into another. If I take your yellow and just go right through... And again, I can smooth it first. I can't match this probably as mucky fingers. That's another thing we want to keep is how to keep fingers clean. And this could be a slight problem for you if you have respiratory problems because you, you really will need a spirit. I can't think of okay. what we need to find a solvent you can use. That mm -hmm. There must be some on the market because, mm -hmm. there, will be, because there will be people with your problem. Yeah. So we, what we need to do now is look up solvents that aren't a um, problem for, the, for, 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 for respiratory uh, uh, delicacies. And um, then you'll need to wash your fingers in between using or have a rag or something with a little bit of this on. Otherwise, you're going to get just as I'm getting. It's going to tint. It's going to smudge. It's going okay. to make you want clean colour. So you'll need some form of rag or something that hasn't got fumes coming off it to be able to clean your fingers in between blending colours. So we said this is overlap. So we've got now that one and that one. And last time I just blended it in. But if I overlap slightly and then blend, we get the same effect. But it's more gentle that way it's slightly heavier this way perhaps there's not it's 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 it's, it's like uh, elgar it's uh, themes on, uh, on uh, variations on a theme isn't it um you know it's almost the same as doing the blending one into the other it's overlapping it um and then again overlapping though it does give us the opportunity to to play with these colors let's take a purple for instance over here um we're going to have to overlap or overlay if we're going to put one colour over another now. If I was here, then that would be like this one, that would be blending it in. But if I'm here, it's directly overlapping, and then it's how much we go as to how we bring it out and how strong we are. So we can make the colour stronger by giving it a second coat and blending it out. So we've got blending, we've got overlapping, and then we've got laying on top of the colour, which is also overlapping. So already mm -hmm. we've got those. How detail can we go? We can start to work in very light feathering with this. And then you have a problem with these huge things called fingers. So then I start to think, well, do we start using tools? Do we start using a cotton wool bud? Where you can actually lift out it. And that, that lifted that colour out there, look, as well. If it's mm -hmm. clean, it's possible we could find ways of actually lifting the colour out with it as well. Start using tools. Do we start using a cotton wool bud? Where you can actually... And lift out it, and that, that lifted that colour out there. Look as well. If it's mm -hmm. clean, it's possible we could find ways of actually lifting the colour out with it as well as blending with it. Mm -hmm. If it gets mucky, it's going to blend. Mm -hmm. If it's clean, it might have to lift out. As we could, if I put a little bit of, I suspect, of terps into this, we were going to talk about blending with the terps in a minute. So I'm going to keep that one clean so we can lift out when we come to the terps down here. Let's take uh, two different colours again. Got to keep using the same colours. And, um, ooh, what should we have this time? Two, two, two nice opposite colours that would be nice. What about this one? Something like that. Would that be nice? Yeah, yeah. What, do you, what would you like to go with that? Um, that Those good. two? Yep. Yeah. Good idea. Lovely. So, again, we want to blend, but this time we're going to be working with the white spirit and just seeing what the white spirit will do. Shouldn't be too much of a problem on your, on your lungs. Bring that down to there, nice and heavily, again there, and a bit light. I'm going to go very light here for, for a reason, you'll see in a moment. Put that one back there again, and we'll bring this one up here, heavily here, and very lightly here. And this time I'm going to take a little bit of white spirit, to help substitute if you like. And I said there will be other solvents, I'm sure you can find. I've got some solvents there from the SAA, for instance, that are useful for removing... Um, oils and uh, acrylics from one's clothes. It might be that that one would do it as well. Uh, let's have a look. Oil, paint, dilutant and brush cleaner. Now I don't know. Let's have a, if I flake out a flop on the floor. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite strong but I don't know. Do you smell? It doesn't it go, go on clothes. Bad. It doesn't yeah. do any harm on clothes. Mm -hmm. As compared to the white spirit, if you give that a sniff, it's stronger. Yeah, it's yeah. Much, much stronger. Right, so it might be that stuff comes from the SAA. Okay. And it's oil paint and brush cleaner. 
Okay. So we'll try that. Shall we try that in a minute? Just see how yeah. it works. Yeah. Let's take a clean cotton wool bud. I think I held that in front of that just now. Yep. <laughs> right. And we'll see what happens when we put a bit of this onto there. If I just put a bit here and use my finger, you can see already how it thins it out and it's almost like painting with watercolour. Mm -hmm. And if I want to blend with them, I can use that to get a much, much smoother look effect. And I suspect I could even use a brush. Let's have a bit of fun. Let's take a wee brush. Because we want as many techniques, as many hours to our bow as possible, don't we? So if we take this brush, oh yes, we can, we can lift paint with it. And I suspect we're going to actually be able to pick up the paint and paint with it as well. Yeah. So we can turn our oil pastels back into a thin version of oil paint. Mm -hmm. And looking at your picture here again, um, of this, we can already see how we could get these effects with a brush bringing those out into your, wanting another colour, can't we? Mm -hmm. So already we've seen direct ways of doing it, but if we can't get in there with the very big pastels or we want finer detail, we can use a brush. And I have found this as well with um, the soft pastels because I'm using the great big unison pastels. Uh, they're very hard to define work with. Mm -hmm. So, we played them with white spirit. Let's have a little go with this. Um, Let's just see what this, this brush thinner will do, because if it doesn't smell as badly for you, it may be uh, a saviour for you. Let's take a make sure my finger is dry. Yes, it will, won't it, though? Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's even more gentle. So there's a thought for you. Okay. And it's not as smelly. Um, mm -hmm. No, nope, that seems to be quite good. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're inventing all the time. As artists, we're always, you know, this with that, this plus that, this plus, and we're going to be finding new ways. So we've got blending now with that, stumbling we discussed earlier, that's putting one colour over another. Mm -hmm. Let's just do that again, and we'll combine. So there's already our stumbling effect. Now if we just make that right the way across here. Now because that paper is slightly rough, if I put a colour over that, it's going to let the colour underneath glow through if I, because of the rough paper. So this is, this is scumbling. And now you can see the, that textural work mm -hmm. just coming through underneath. If I want to be much stronger like your pictures are there, I've got to push much, much harder. Right. And that, I think, is where the problem starts to come. With soft pastel, the problem comes with too much pastel. Okay. And then you can't put pastel on pastel on pastel. Yeah. So you have to get a stiff brush and brush it away. How are we going to get rid of that? Well, we already know we can lift out with the thinner, don't we? Yeah. So we could lift away and put more colour on again, I suspect. Uh -huh. And this is what we want to do. Is I'm just giving you ways to have fun at home and to explore and we'll see how far you can go. Yeah. yeah. Um, cross hatching. Now, um, wonderful thing, cross hatching. It goes around a form. Um, I'm going to show an example on the, on the screen now. which you can see later <laughs> when you go back to my YouTube, but I did one years ago, uh, Still Life when I was painting in Pippington, and we go around the form. So for instance, if I had a green apple, a little leaf coming off there, and we make that totally green. Now, I can blend onto that to make things lighter or darker, and I can go on the outside to make things lighter or darker. So let's take, what's that, is that a black or a deep, let's have a deep, deep purple, even though it's alone. Let's go around the outside of this with a fairly dark colour straight away, just to give us, make the thing stand out. So we've got already light against dark, just for the hell of it. So I'm going to go right round that, and I'm going to blend the outside just a little bit, which will give me a feeling of roundness, because if I come into that form slightly, look, it's going to just give me a shadow around it, isn't that? Just a mm -hmm. little bit. Now, if we were doing a standard apple on this, that we can get one colour over another, we can use it thinly, or we can build it up thickly, um, we would gradually tint and build this up like brush marks. But in cross hatching, it's a bit different because in cross hatching, we tend to go actually around the forms themselves. Make sure I've got this on, yeah. So I would start to bring little marks around the form. And this is better with a smoother paper because now I'm okay. getting the problem of the texture yeah. with a smooth paper. Cross hatching is 
like netting, it's crisscross, 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 one across another gradually. And same with the reds, we start to bring red in. It's just little lines rather than blending of colour. And that would be in little lines like this, except the texture's getting in the way. Mm -hmm. You get the idea of cross hatching, yeah. it, will go, it will go in and it will go around the forms, you're gradually building it up one across another, one across another with cross hatching. Quite different to the blending. If I did the blending there, it's totally different in texture. Mm -hmm. You'd need a smoother paper for it to work. Mm -hmm. Works better with coloured pencils or pens or things like that, but mm -hmm. that's cross hatching. Um, and that should have been there. <laughs> so, Prantalist. Now, here with the Prantalist, we've got two ways of doing it. We can go straight in with our green again, with the apple, and we can just blend that in. Or from the very beginning, we could have done little dots of colour, like that. And then we can go over the top, gradually building up our shadows until we've got no white left or until the colour underneath. You can see the white is getting in the way there, but we'd have to gradually lose that. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted it to be deeper around the edge, then I would gradually... And again, I'm tending to work from light to dark. It's much easier, much cleaner that way. But you can see how we can start to get the effect of an apple coming there now, and the shadow will come out here. And I put darker, darker points into that shadow. Nice deep blue here, that deep blue down here, to go around the corner. But... So instead of doing um, the mixing of red and yellow to make orange, this is where I do the red and yellow dots from mm -hmm. a distance to make orange and gradually mm -hmm. build it up. So cross hatching, little lines across, cross, 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 cross. Pointillism, making it all up by little dots. If you look at a magazine article or a magazine photograph, if you look closely, that's how they do it. Right. The dot printer, the dot matrix printer yeah. is what it is. Yeah. It's one little dot against another, and because they get away with only a few colours, um, magenta, cyan, and so on. But those are all the basic techniques I've seen okay. being used on YouTube. Um, and we've added to them with doing underpainting and sgraffito. Uh -huh. So I don't really need to show you much more, I don't think, on that. Okay. For us to get these effects of your birds, so we wanted to do these birds, we've got undercolours there and then we've got colours on top. This is where I think the thing gets difficult. It's when we want to put lighter colours over darker. Mm -hmm. How will that work? something like this will it become mucky or can we actually do it if we don't make the under color too thick i think we can get away let's take the sparrow here for instance let's take a very deep um ooh, purple gray what's that one that's a yeah let's take that one and we'll just so the say say the bird shape is this approximately got his tail coming down now put a tail in too and i'm going to just cover the whole of that in a very light coat because i want a thin coat so I made that quite a thin coat, deliberately. I can add more to it, but I'm sure if I put too much on, I won't be able to put the light over the top, so we'll explore with that. Here I'm going to put a little bit more. And then we've got those colours behind there as well, so I'm going to put a deeper blue just for fun, just to see how far we can get with this. So that blue there might do it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just go thinly around the bird. Again, you'd be better off with a smooth paper, I think, for this unless you really want to texture. Right. So hot press, Archer's hot press is a nice one for this. Or the pastel papers, if you get a fairly smooth pastel paper, wouldn't work. Right, I should be able to lay my lighter colours over that and my darker. So if we take a really dark one now, then we can look, start to get this feeling mm -hmm. of the bird. And we can use texture because we can just, so I'm a bit thicker. But I wouldn't be able to lay that very easily onto a thick colour, would I? No. It would, it would tend to, yeah. the colour underneath would come through as it would with the blending. Yeah. So we're working up a thinner colour underneath just to get the basics. Now let's go to our next, um, to our white, and then we'll go back to the grey in a minute. Well, we'll only really do the grey first, we'll do a bit of grey first. So I'm going to work up a little bit of this grey on top. It's, it's fine enough that where it's not too thick I can put the... So I'm building up, in this case, from dark to light. Now, in watercolour, it's the other way around. We have to build from light to dark. Mm -hmm. So let's get these little effects of the feathers, just like it is there, as much as we can. Little strokes, and you see the texture of the paper's yeah. helping me to do that. And the harder I push, the less the paper's going to show. Then on the outside, we'll look at the, uh, the lighter green here, the blue I mean, green, blue, blue, blue. Now, together. 
So you want to show out a bit so you can go around the outside. And already we're getting that feeling, it's coming isn't it, of that. Mm -hmm. So let's go up to the white next and we'll just put the cheeks in. And you can see now, because I haven't got too much pastel, I should be able to gradually build this up on top. Again, a smoother paper, I wouldn't be getting the texture of the paper, but we're almost there, little beak here. Yeah, not far off, are we? Mm -hmm. And the thicker I put this, then the more white we're going to get. The thicker I put it, look, we can go nice and creamy, just like oil paint. And that's the beauty of a better quality material. We've got a slight bit of warmth coming now. We've got this slight pinky colour. So you've really got to look for your colours if you want to get it something like that. Mm -hmm. So then we go to this slight mauve. Mm -hmm. And we start to build that into there, look. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit, just to get so you can see the colours coming in down here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we could, you've seen how now, okay. to get your effects you wanted. Yeah. So you can play with that now with different papers, with underpainting, with... I've given you the basics of the techniques, you yeah. now can do what you came to do. Okay. So should we have some fun now and take it a stage further okay. and go totally mixed medium and have a go at this China graph and okay. snow scene? Yeah. But that's giving you what you wanted to see, yeah. hasn't it really? So you've come and you know all the basics there are that we've seen publicly of how to use the oil pastels, um, the blending, the fingers, the overlap, and so on and so on and so on, and the underpainting. Now we want to use China Graph Pencil, watercolour, and these pastels, we're going to use them with water over them to see how well they resist, which I've never okay. done. Okay. And blow me, but Nanny's actually bought across her own proper pastel pad, and what I was just saying, the very thing I was saying about smooth and hot pressed papers, here is, and she's already been doing, I see some texture in here, so you're well on the way, um, this is the same feel as a hot press paper and I said about 300 and this is just over 300 pound because it's quite heavy stuff but that's exactly what I'm saying that is just like and that's like a mount card finish as well right. so you would find off cuts of off cuts of mount card quite useful and it would already have a color underneath right so you can buy the colored mount cards cream brown and, and that it. color stays, stays on, on card pretty, pretty yeah. well because it's okay. acid free and it's pretty strong stuff okay. everything in the favorite with the, with the pastel over as well it's much better than that mm. much right so what I normally do is just mark the photograph up on a scene like this, in, into basic quarters. The inks will actually, the paints will actually tint these just slightly. So what I want you to do is very roughly, and this is going to give you scale, we've got a textured paper, which is going to work against us in some ways, but for us when we come to the snow. Where there's a light piece, leave it light, but it doesn't matter because we can do it with the oil pastel in a minute. I want you to put these in as black as you can to this one. Really, That's really a good question. Bad. So do we need to do more drawing before painting? If we're doing figurative painting, then drawing is a foundation to it. Mm -hmm. And it is important to be able to draw fairly well. So having lessons in perspective, having lessons in tone, texture, form, um, all of them, uh, scaling, all of these things are quite important, yes. Uh, okay, we've got, it's difficult because we've got the sunlight coming through here, it's not good for the camera, but it'll be all right. Now we've got the China Graph pencil on. What I want to do now is going from lights to darks, we, were, we would normally put white pastel in at the very end. We would go now from our darker colours with watercolour up to the light pastel. But just for fun, I want you to do a little bit of the old pastel techniques on here. And let's say, for instance, this sun, which is what, about there, is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I make that white with the oil pastel, thickly and then we start to work those colours out with the oil pastel so it's a very very light yellow first of all I'm just going to blend with the pastel itself I'm not going to use my fingers I'm just going to blend with the pastel one into another so there's our lovely yellow coming outwards at first here if we put the pastel on it's going to resist everything else but look we can still just see the black underneath, which yeah. is rather lovely. Mm -hmm. So they are slightly transparent, which is nice. If we make them thicker, then we will lose that gradually. And I'd just like you to tint in these yellows where you see them here and there. So little dots and dashes of the yellow coming right down through here. So, so just, wherever you see the yellows, just stippling. Yeah, or? stippling, that's right. Stippling and blocking in one, two areas like that, maybe. You can use your finger a bit if you want. Use the if you go from light to darker to darker, we can actually start to blend into these other oil pastels we've already got a little bit with the tip of the pastel, not with the finger. Don't want to smudge it too much. And just bring these little bits of dark. When you've done that, then we'll move on to the very light pink, okay? Yep. And where are we now? 
where, where does that... Well, that's all over. Yeah. It's coming through here, looking down into here. So we've got this peak and it's through into the edges here. It's coming through right up into here. Look, there's little bits of snow coming down through there. We're going to put some of this in with... Uh, What I want to do, I've got enough colour on there and texturing for fun. I'd just like you to put some of the whites in, not all of them. Let's look at some of these bigger areas. Off we go. So what we're going to do now is use the unison pastel to see the lovely qualities we've got here. Now just feel that pastel there with your finger. Right, now feel one of these. Totally different. These yeah. are lovely and creamy, but they are soft. But I want to do the watercolours first, and we'll use a nice big oval mop for that. This is a one inch... Um, Pro Art over Mop, the wonderful brushes. You, you know, Ron Ramson can paint with a, a uh, heat brush like that and, and the rigger. I can get away with this and a round or a rigger to do almost an entire painting. So, right. very, very useful brushes. You can paint that way, you can paint that way, as we're going to see in just a moment. We're going to work from our lights to our darks, and we're not going to leave any white at all. But look at the different colour hues we've got here the acidic turquoise blues here and the much warmer ultramarines here. This is more, not so easy now, we've got some darks here as well if we need them, so we've got the dark set of unisons and we've got all of those. Mm -hmm. Not using those yet, those are to finish. So you can see what you're doing, there are the colours, because this for instance is a much more turquoise, that one there. Right. And we need to know these, these colours. Let's start with our yellows. And we want to do wet into wet. We're going to drop wet into wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the entire paper first. This yellow now. Don't worry about that because even if we did go over that, look, it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's going to resist. This is the yeah. beauty. So we start with these, these colours working right the way through. Look, we're going to lose all of the white, as said, isn't it? So again, we can start to bring that in and let it just... Don't, don't take out all your... I'm using the tip of the brush more now. I'm just getting that brush just... Come in and let the effects of paint, let the, the effects be um, controlled accidents, as I say. Let them spread one into another, just with the tip of your brush. So we're starting to get these controlled accidents coming through here. So all of this is white oil pastel, isn't it? Yeah. Which is great. We can bring that all the way down. That glow comes all the way down into here. Now we're going to start on the blues, and we're going to start with our cool blue, which I hope is going to be this one. Yes, that's it. So that's our nice turquoise blue and that's the one we're going to paint the whole of this with straight off with that turquoise blue so if it starts to get mixed too much well, this is where we're going to bring it back a yeah but we're going to lose lots of color because i want to i want to go all purple now we want to go to our ultramarine which is a much warmer blue and we let that really now we can get these lovely fairy effects by dropping that in so you see these marks like that we can just be careful how far they spread, so spread them out quite well. Some lovely colours there, that's really starting to happen. Right, if you've got a big blob here you're not happy about, then suck it up. Get okay. the brush and suck it out. So wherever else now, because we're going to go darker yet with, the, with these blues, um, mm -hmm. wherever else you might see that behind here, look the way that those trees just come up there. Start to get some of these branches in all the way through here, and the trees, and that's it. Really feel those darks, and uh, that's beautiful. Look at the paint you're getting. I mean, you probably turn around and say, forget the... Uh, well, I'll pass us on loving this. Okay, all the little branches over here. Now that's it. Pick it up from there and we'll use it over here so we can start to get these little tiny branches, lots and lots and lots. Just the tip of the recording. So we're just going to let that dry off. Is that done? Yeah, that's, I think that's not too bad. Okay. Now you see, look at that texture you're getting now. Isn't that beautiful? That's a lovely bit of painting. Now you're turning out a piece of real art, you see. Do you know I say it? It's smashing. Let's stop. So quite strongly in places, push quite hard to make it um, strong and clean and otherwise it's not going to go on, especially over the wax. We're putting in the final marks with the chalk pastels now. So we've used oil pastel, watercolours, China graph pencil and the soft pastels, the unisex. Right. Uh, I think it's anything rude. Uh, so this, this lovely cool that comes through here, and it is there, now I put it in. You can see it now I put it in, but before you might not have seen it. So sometimes you've got to pick up something and actually put it in to really see it. Mm -hmm. Even the way there's little bits of a blue ghost up here and behind here. Now, what do we say the opposite to uh, red was in the colour circle? Green. Right. So I'm going to take a very, very deep green now. And I just want you to use a bit of the green amongst the trees and here. Just to add a bit of... You see what that does? It's going to bring those warms out a bit. So we'll just use a bit of that. Well, I think, personally, that's absolutely gorgeous. Now... Honestly, what do you think? Are you happy with the way you've done that for your first time? Yeah, that's good. 
It's nice, isn't it? And we've not only done that, we've done... So there we are, the, the whole lesson today, two hours, talking about oil pastel. I hope that helps you as well to introduce you to the medium of oil pastel with our new student here. I'm sure he'll come again and show you some more later. <laughs>